Hey everyone, I'm here with Scott Guthrie, EVP of Cloud and AI at Microsoft, and Ali Godzi, CEO of Databricks. So Ali, tell us a little bit about what Databricks is. Yeah, so what Databricks helps you do is take data that you have inside of an organization, structured, unstructured, yeah. organize it all in open formats, then put governance on it so you can secure and lock it down, and then on top of that, you can do all kinds of things, mm -hmm. ranging from just analytics to all the way to building agents and AI. And it's all of this is integrated into the whole Azure ecosystem. So it's integrated with every product that you have inside of Azure. So uh, that's kind of what it, what it does. I love that. Sure. I love that. And Scott, you know, going off of what Ali has said, what is the relationship between Databricks and Microsoft? How do you work together, and for how long? Well, we've been partners for well over eight years uh, that we've actually had uh, uh, a first party service, meaning it's Microsoft branded Azure Databricks. Uh, I was just catching up with Ali before this yeah. event in terms of, I remember an event we did in New York. Uh, <laughs> we were trying to figure out, was it 2016 or 2017 where we first showed it to the world? And it's right. been a fantastic partnership. We've got more than 20,000 uh, enterprises around the world that are using it today on Azure. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's really been uh, fantastic for both companies and then more importantly for our customers because right. it really enables that open, flexible way to kind of leverage your data and right. use your data more. Right. right, and I'm gonna hang there a little bit because the importance for customers and this partnership and why it's lasted for so long, can you walk us through a little bit of what that's been like? Well, I think the thing that, that you know, both, both Databricks and, and Microsoft are very focused on is how do we make our customers successful? Right. And um, you know, data is at the heart of every business. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, how do we let, let customers securely store their data? How do they actually unify more of their data assets in yeah. one place? And ultimately, be able to get BI value out. So our Power BI integration together is yeah. one key area. How do you do reports and query analytics? And then ultimately, in this era of AI, mm -hmm. how do you actually train AI models? Right. And then ultimately, how do you surface AI agents? Mm. And a lot of the work that we've done across um, Microsoft Copilot and Microsoft 365 Copilot, and for example, uh, Databricks Genie, uh, is about you know integrating the agent so that you know you can have one seamless experience yeah. in the context of AI yeah. across your entire data estate. Yeah, and it's so important to you know, put the customer at the center, which is what you both have been doing and this partnership has been doing. So Ali, tell us more about how Azure Databricks works with Microsoft and Azure ecosystems. How is it beneficial to the customer? Yeah, so the way it works is that Azure Databricks, first of all, integrates with Entra. So all of the identities that you have in Entra yeah. flow right through Azure Databricks. And then, of course, all of the data is stored in open formats. And what we're really excited about here now is that any data that you have in Databricks that you've organized with Unity Catalogs, you've set up your governance, yeah. your security, you can now mirror data that you have in one lake into Unity Catalog and access it without any data migration. It's right. zero copy. Right. Uh, and you'll be able to do the same thing in the other direction as well. And it, any data that you had stored in ADLS in Azure Databricks will be able to also with zero copy uh, mirror and make it available also in one lake. So the integration works really, really well. Then of right. course, it's also integrated with the whole e AI stack. So right. things like Agent 365, things like Foundry, uh, things like Copilot Studio. Yeah. So it's seamlessly integrated into all of these things. Even Power Apps uh, is a very, very popular integration between Azure Databricks. Right. People love building these Power Apps. You know, it's no code, low code, and you can build, especially these days, you can vibe code anything you like. Yeah. Uh, but at the core of it is, again, that data that's so important to the enterprises yeah. and then making sure that you've actually locked it down so that you ensure privacy. Right, right. And I think for a lot of customers, actually all of our customers, security is important, a unified platform is important. So Scott, tell us a little bit about what's new for the Azure Databricks around data analytics and what big news are you sharing? Well, I think the, the biggest news probably this week uh, mm -hmm. between the, the two companies is the integration we're doing across uh, our uh, One Lake uh, uh, offering at Microsoft and Unity Catalog, which is Databricks' is offering. And, yeah. and you know, as Ali mentioned just before, that ability to kind of seamlessly integrate the data together without needing to copy it, yeah. you know, really enables organizations to leverage the data that they have. You know, mm -hmm. uh, 
every time you have to copy, there's some latency in the copying. Mm. Uh, it, there's extra cost in the copying. And you know, at the end of the day, if, if you can actually seamlessly integrate into your lake house yeah. um, data from all of your existing systems of record and right. across all your different analytic systems, right. you can leverage that data and get more value out of it faster, yeah. cheaper, and, and better. And, right. and so like that, that's a huge announcement for us in terms of that integration again across one lake and across the Unity Catalog. Right. Uh, and that really unlocks the entire Databricks and Microsoft ecosystem yeah. in one unified governed way. Right. And then I think the other big announcement is around the work we're doing around agents. Mm. And so um, that ability yeah. again, with all the announcements we're doing this week around Microsoft 365 Copilot, um, uh, Agent 365 and, and all the work we're doing around governance, right. uh, now we'll work with uh, Databricks Genie, yeah. uh, which is Databricks's AI agent. And that ability to kind of have agents compose with agents yeah. to solve real world problems, right. I think is what every organization is looking for and it really unlocks a tremendous amount of value. Yeah, and I think what I'm hearing from you too is that you all are listening to the customer. You're giving the customer what they want, also what they need, right, which is super important. So Ali, talk to me a little bit about how this all comes together, right? What is the product experiences that customers can have from this, and then what can you show us here? Yeah, I mean, honestly, more than me talking about it, maybe yeah. we just uh, uh, look at the demo. Take us uh, through, the, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, okay, so if, if, uh, if we next look at the screen here, uh, so what we're looking at here is Unity Catalog, okay. which is the central place where you set up all the governance of Azure Databricks. So you, know, you can have all your data there, uh, all of your models, um, all of your unstructured data. But what we're doing now here is that we've actually set up, you can see here we're clicking on one lake, and one lake is now seamlessly available, zero copy mirrored in uh, and you can see it in Unity Catalog. We also have uh, SAP okay. uh, Azure Databricks here. So we can see actually data that we have from SAP. It could be ERP data that you have, and it's uh, stored here. Uh, so OK, so we've set up all our data yes. in Unity Catalog. We've governed it. We have access to one lake data. We have access to SAP data. So next, um, uh, let's start uh, asking some questions from this data. Okay. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do next uh, is that we're going to go in, and this is Genie. So Genie lets you now select tables that you have in Unity Catalog. So it could be in one lake, it could be uh, in SAP. Okay. And you can start asking questions in English from the data. So I'm just going to select one of these that's there, and we're going to ask a question about this VAT receipts here. Uh, but what's really interesting about it is it now actually will construct queries for you as if it was an analyst, and it will give you the answers without hallucinating. So you can see here, uh, it's giving you the dollar amounts. Now, the great thing is you can always bring in a subject matter expert that can look at the query if you want. Okay. And it can edit the query, and it can make sure that that query, that there are no errors in it. And if they fix it, it'll remember it, and it'll get smarter over time. Right. Uh, you can, of course, click here. You can see it's actually extracted all these English descriptions about all the information that you have in Unity Catalog. Uh, so it's used generative AI to describe that. Uh, and you can, of course, go and add your own instructions in English if you want to make the room smarter. Smart. Okay. So you can add more sort of uh, things that you know you think can guide it better. Yeah, we like smarter. <laughs> yeah, so that's so that's that's uh, Genie, and now we we have our, we have Genie there. We can okay. ask questions about it in English. But what if we also have a bunch of unstructured data? So here we're going to build an agent next uh, in um, Agent Bricks. So this is a knowledge assistant that's running on one lake. You can see, and um, inside of it we can set it up uh, and configure it so that it has access to these CFO notes and some financial documents. And we can debug it here on the right. So you can see how it would be. If we ask it in English questions, mm -hmm. um, it can now actually go and uh, interrogate that unstructured data. Uh, it thinks through it. It comes up with a plan. Yeah. And then, of course, gives you the answers. But the nice thing about the answers that it gives you is that you can actually get receipts. And you can actually see mm -hmm. where did it get exactly this information from. And you can start iterating on that quality. So we can see here it's extracted information from these PDFs. Uh, and the best part of this is that you can actually now give it instructions uh, to tune it uh, so that it gets uh, smarter over time. Right. Okay, so that's just, now we have these, we have you know, two ways of asking questions. Yes. Let's say we want to put together a multi agent system. So let's mm. say we want to string together uh, multiple of these agents. So this is a multi agent supervisor that we're looking at here. So um, we have our unstructured data, we have our structured data. At the bottom, also, we're giving the access to just search. So uh -huh. we're giving it uh, MCP server that it can actually just go off to and do web search on. 
so now you have an agent uh, that can both interrogate the structured data, yeah. you know, generating SQL queries for you automatically, the unstructured data. And if there's something it doesn't know, it can actually go off to the web and uh, search the web uh, for that information. So okay. let's give it a try. So we ask a question again in English. Uh, but now the multi-agent supervisor will figure out a strategy and see where can it best find this information uh, out of these three sort of agents that we've given it. So you can mm. see here, this shows you actually the queries that it's going to make, so we can actually debug them again and making sure that they're doing it the right way. Right. And if the answers are not what we want, uh, we can actually uh, go ahead uh, and look at how we actually receive those. So let's look at the traces. And you can see the details of the traces, all the agents that were called, all the invocations. Mm -hmm. You can actually debug them uh, and make sure that they're uh, doing it the right way. You can look at the timeline here on the x-axis. You can see how long it took. And if there's something that took too long, yeah. uh, you can fix that um, and make the agent um, just you know, perfect for that use yes. case uh, that you have. Uh, so that's how this works. But what I'm really excited about is here, when we put it all together yes. inside Microsoft Next. So what we've done now is we take Genie, we put it inside Copilot Studio, and we actually integrate it into Teams. So we should be able to now ask all of these agents directly in Teams the questions that we have. And it'll actually go through, again, governed by Unity Catalog, ensuring the correctness that we just iterated through, and it can do that for you. Yeah. But the best part of that, all of this is available right now. But what's coming next is that you'll be able to actually take these agents and put them in Agent 365. And that way, you can have digital coworkers inside Office mm -hmm. that you can actually talk to. And mm -hmm. they're routing your questions yeah. to the right agent for the right job. Uh, and it'll just be available there for you, seamlessly integrated into Azure ecosystem, part of my Microsoft 365. And I love that what all that you demoed is available for the customer right now. Yeah. And you demoed you know, a lot there. So yeah. tell me, what's the one takeaway that you want the customer to walk away from this right now? Yeah, that you know, it's really important that you can govern and secure your data. And once you've done that, yeah. you can build these agents, and they're seamlessly integrated into the whole Azure ecosystem, mm -hmm. whether it's Entra, or whether it's Agent 365, or Foundry, or Copilot Studio, or Power Apps. Yeah. It's just integrated into that whole ecosystem. And therefore, you don't need to think about, how do we make this work? Yeah. Uh, it's just seamless. And to you, Scott, tell us a little bit about how this partnership enables customers to leverage all their data investments. Well, I think, yeah, I think as kind of Ali mentioned, I think mm. one of the things that's most powerful is the fact that it really enables you to integrate with everything, right. both in terms of what's consuming the data, but then also where you pull the data from. So for example, the SAP Databricks integration that Ali showed yeah. you know, allows you to kind of you know, take your SAP instance running on Azure yeah. and seamlessly be able to access the data. And it's, you know, importantly, it's not a copy of the data. Uh, you're accessing the live data. Yeah. And so, you know, if, if accounts receivable changes in the next minute, it's reflected. Okay. And that, that ability to kind of have that data be live and then integrated with your your employees through MCG5, having digital agents that work with your employees through our Agent 365, yeah. all integrated with a single common security model that yeah. you can govern around and reason around, you know, really enables organizations to leverage all their data, but also do it that much, much faster, yeah. and, and be able to really integrate AI and, and drive business outcomes with yeah. it, which is what everyone's looking for. Yeah, and I think what's brilliant about this, and also powerful, is that this partnership provides customers with seamless access to their live data. Yep. And I think that's really, really incredible. Um, and so thank you both for joining me. Where can customers go to learn more? Well, there's actually two sessions. I think one at 1 o'clock yes. and one at uh, 2 p.m., okay. uh, both on Azure Databricks. So yes. check those out and please attend those. Yes. Thank you both for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank, thank you. you.